The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is John Skies. Once again, I'm the director of media for TAPS. Thank you for joining us today for session B, the last session of our new fine art director training. Uh, just a few things to recap before we get started. This is webinar is being recorded. A link to that recording and this morning's session will be shared with you tomorrow uh, at the same email you use to register for this. Uh, please use the questions panel and go to webinar to ask your questions as we go. We're going to answer those as best we can. Um, at the end of today's session, you'll be able to download your certificate of completion. Um, in the handout section, that's in the little drop down menu that says handouts. Um, I've left the session A certificate in there in case anybody didn't have time to get it this morning. Um, and I'm going to swap that out for session B. Uh, and there's some other handouts from this morning that I'm going to leave in there and swap out as we go. If you're having any trouble with the webinar, please use the questions feature or the chat feature to get my attention. Um, okay. And uh, just as this morning, we're joined by Brian Bunselmeyer, TAPS Executive Director, Robert Huckabee, TAPS Associate Director and Director of Compliance, Steve Prudhomme, TAPS Associate Director, Vina Williams, Taxter, uh, TAPS Director of Fine Arts, and Will Dixon, who is in charge of our live broadcasts, and he's helping us out behind the keyboard today. Um, before I hand it over to Vina, folks, I've got a quick poll for everybody. If you could please tell us about your anticipated participation in activities this fall. All right, with that, I'm going to close this poll and hand it over to Vina. Thanks, John. Uh, this morning's session at 10 o'clock, we covered the history and governance of TAPS, the calendar, and some dates, uh, some resources. And we went into a little uh, detail for cheer dance, music, and some esports. Um, that session was recorded, so if you missed the 10 a.m. session, you'll be able to look over the video, watch it later. Um, you'll get that uh, through your registration of this webinar. You'll get a recording of both the A and B session. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to go into communication, eligibility, health and safety. We'll look at specific activities of one-act play, art and academic speech, and robotics. I will talk a little bit more about awards a little bit deeper into that, and then we'll get on with our current plans and contingencies, and then what, uh, what you need to do as a fine arts director to get your school year started. So Robert is going to start us off with um, communication. All right. Thanks, Vina. All right. Question, how do you communicate with the TAPS office? And as or more importantly, how do we communicate to you what's going on in your world, whether you're a fine arts director or you're a coach or sponsor of a particular activity? Where do I find information uh, relevant to the organization in general? Uh, where do I find information relevant to my particular uh, activity? And then how do we reach out to you to get you that information from the TAPS office. So Vina, take us through uh, the, the web page and where uh, our listeners can find that particular information. Our website is taps.biz. Uh, we showed you in the 10 o'clock session the actual web page. Uh, the main page, we want to make sure that you are your attention is drawn to find the fine arts link, the calendar link, resource link, eventually our convention link, and the news post sidebar. Um, also, when you click on that Fine Arts link, it will take you to the Fine Arts webpage. This webpage has the entry fees so that you can pre-plan ahead of time and not wait until things are registered and you have an itemized list, but that you can budget uh, ahead of time of those events. Uh, the director's corner has the latest news post, and we will also get some checklists available for all the coaches there. The activity link page, so every activity has their own website that has the important information for individual activities. The results, honors, and certificates are also listed on that fine arts webpage. Now, the individual activity pages has the important dates specific to those coaches, championship information and event information, Preparation materials such as rubrics and um, reading lists, just all the things that you would need to prepare for the event are on those individual activity pages. It also has the news post that is are sent out and as well as our social media accounts. So it is really important to visit the website frequently. 
this is our own only way of sharing the bulk of our information is through our website on those activity pages. Uh, any changes and updates that we make on the website, we will also send out an email notification such as, hey, the schedule's ready for this event, go check it out. Um, and we'll just post it on the website. So you'll get a notification saying, we've posted the schedule or we've at updated this document. And so it's important that you um, have the correct email address for us. So moving on, we've got communicating with us and us to you. Not only do we post it, but we will also send you the notifications. Our main portal for communication via email is through Rank One. And we will go into a little more detail about Rank One in a little bit. But right now, I just want you to know that that is how we will send our emails, your email that is in Rank One. Um, so they will come through those notifications. Those emails are also reposted as on the director's corner in the activities pages. But when you want to email us, how do you do that? Some of you have our individual emails, but we would prefer you to use the info at taps.biz email. That inbox allows our office to collaborate and move emails easily from one staff person to another without losing any time delays with that. So uh, you can use our contact us link on the website to generate that email, or you can just send it directly to info at taps.biz. Steve, um, if you could talk about yes. rank one a little bit. Well, one thing I'd like you to be able to check to make sure you have that email in rank one. If you see emails being posted on the website, but you did not receive them, you probably need to go back and make sure that your web, your uh, email address is correct and that you're not blocking us in, in a firewall or something like that. Also, we'll do some rank one pushes, but really what we're doing literally for most things is pulling those email addresses out and sending them through MailChimp. So you'll kind of get it both ways. As long as you have your information correct, we'll be able to get to you. Rank one is also gonna be doing a few things for us this year. And we are very excited about all the work in the spring that was done on the fine arts side of rank one. But we're doing our coach and sponsor compliance. Make sure you go through that. They need to all have their profile filled out and then they'll just kind of push button, just follow along. It'll let you know what you need to do. All the student eligibility will be taken care of. The, the student family needs to do the uh, student profile, which leads you through where you need to go. We'll also be able to create our rosters um, and make sure that you set up all your people in the right spots and what they're doing. And we need to know everything that you're doing. So you're the band director, but you also do uh, art. Well, don't just say band director, they got me once. We need to know exactly who you are and exactly what you do. So we have that some, not as much with fine arts, more with athletics. Um, and make sure the communication can, continues to come. If you have a difficulty, you do have support through rank one, but you also have some questions that we can answer in the TAPS office. And so we'll get into the rhythm of that as we move forward. Now to our sponsor, rank one, and go ahead, John, and run the spot. Hello, my name is Tracy Neely, Rank One Health President. I wanted to be able to plug you in today and let you hear just a little bit about our digital ecosystem and all the different uh, higher standards that we're able to offer you with your Rank One system. We are very well known for your efficient communications within your internal buildings using the Rank One sport platform with your athletic trainers and your coaches and your athletic directors. But what we've done is we've taken it a step forward. We've been able to offer the Rank One Health Messenger system to be laid right into your Rank One Sport platforms. What this does is it helps your athlete management system be extended into your healthcare provider system. And the healthcare providers can be contacted immediately through the athletic trainers using the Health Messenger system. It's a virtual health connectivity for you in an immediate crisis care situation. It is a very secure platform with your FERPA HIPAA compliance standards, and you can use uh, your local preferred provider if you have a team doctor that you work with on a pretty regular basis. Um, this will help you reduce your time to care and work directly with that provider. You're able to provide the profiles as well as other uh, injury overview details. Once you're able to uh, make contact with that provider, you can message back and forth and you can close that injury on your end or you can upload a document and get your athletes back to play 
very quickly. And all of those things would be documented in your platform as well as your provider's platform. The other extensions we're offering with your COVID survival kit uh, beyond the health messenger and being able to use that as your virtual health platform. We also have a digital media suite that you're able to advance to into the uh, website and mobile application broadcast platform. This allows you to be able to get people uh, to your events, whether it be a concert or an athletic event. All of your rank one data will sync. So all of your schedules will flow to this platform, your rosters. You can just push this into a website and into your broadcast platform. Uh, with the uh, advantage of having that broadcast, it allows you to uh, store and archive those things as well. So people can go back and watch it even if it's not live. The other thing we offer with our COVID uh, survival kit is the Rank One does offer a COVID screening questionnaire. You can lay that into your athlete profile and do that on a regular 24-hour basis with a thermometer reading if you choose. So we can definitely get you up to speed on that portion. If you're in need of any other products, we do have a, a provider that can help you with the Reveal Medical. So please contact us. Let us know how we can help you in the future. And we are happy to be your rank one provider. Good. And also, uh, there is a lot of help out there for, for PPE and things that you need um, at your school. So reach out to us if you need some information because we have several vendors that have talked to us, but make sure that you get good, affordable product coming to you. We'll move on to student eligibility and Robert. All right, Steve, thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm going to spare you the pain of hours and hours of student eligibility information because we could literally uh, create multiple webinars of all the eligibility rules within TAPS. It is a necessary part of governance uh, for high school student eligibility. Uh, just a reminder that where you can find those particular um, Guidelines and rules are in Article 5 of the Constitution, and then our basic student eligibility rules explained in more detail are in Sections 78 through 106 of our bylaws. Uh, in general, uh, all of your students need to be in Rank 1. If they fall into the category of a student that needs approval through our office, that would be transfer students, that would be international students, or students not living with parents. Um, you need to make sure that they're in rank one and all that proper documentation has been completed and submitted to our office. Once all that happens, they go from the magical red to green in rank one and then they, are, then they are eligible. If you need any help or assistance in that, always reach out to our office. Uh, like, I, like I said, we could spend hours and hours doing a deep dive into all the eligibility rules not necessary as a part of this webinar, but you just need to know it's out there. You need to know your students need to be eligible. You need to coordinate that with whomever at your school might be really in charge of rank one and making sure all that's done correctly. If that's not you, then make sure you coordinate that with that person. And uh, as we go through this process, uh, just a reminder, there are, there are some things in our rules that don't apply to fine arts, but do apply to athletics. Transfers, one of those. Uh, we certainly want to know students that transfer to our schools, but they don't need the previous athletic participation form, what we call here in the office, the PAPF that goes to the previous school has to be signed off and, uh, and, uh, and vetted by us. That's not a part of the fine arts world, so you guys are relieved from some of those obligations. Um, but just reach out to us if you have any questions, info at taps.biz. We can help you walk through that process. Steve, you're gonna take health and safety for us? I'll take health and safety, a big responsibility. Um, there are a few things that you need to do with, with uh, in fine arts for health and safety. Um, you need to have a medical history form for all of the fine arts, and this can be found in rank one going through and it'll be required. Um, physicals are required for band, cheer, and dance uh, every year. And now this year you heard the UIL said that they were gonna waive having a physical for this year and then pick it up next year. That is not the case with TAPS. We want to have an annual uh, physical and uh, as soon as you can. If you're having difficulty, please get it done as soon as you can. Get the medical history in immediately. And obviously, if they're coming back from injury or something like that, you'd want to have a clearance. So again, not as soon as convenient, but as soon as you possibly can. Um, now, speaking of health and safety, we have a tremendous partner, Children's Health Andrews Institute. That's Dr. James Andrews. 
Institute, who is our partner. He came and spoke at the convention last year. And again, the tip of the top, and we have a message from them. Hello, everyone. My name is Larry Lasky, and I'm one of the staff athletic trainers here at Children's Health Andrews Institute. We are pleased to be entering our fourth year of our partnership with TAPS. We provide medical oversight as well as sports medicine event medical coverage for your sports championship series. Think of us as your medical resource. We're here to answer your questions, provide feedback, as well as advice. As part of our partnership, we provide TAPS with a dedicated concierge line, 972-816-3682, and that's available to you 24 hours a day. Our sports medicine services include sports medicine specialty services, concussion, scoliosis, behavioral health, rehabilitation, the Schroth method, sports performance, nutrition, PRN event medical coverage. These links are additional resources that can be utilized. Our website, performance playbook articles, and sports medicine continuing education series. And again, thank you for allowing us to be your sports medicine providers at TAPS. All right, we're gonna pick up, uh, we've had a couple of questions here. We're gonna grab those right quick. Um, I'll take the first one. Here's a question. Is there a reason why we get an email that just says you have a message in rank one? Is it possible to be able to view those in an email? Actually, this year you will get both. You will get an email uh, from us. We'll pull those from rank one based on your particular role at your school. So if we're sending out something to art teachers or to band directors, we'll pull that group. That's why you need to be, all your roles at your school need to be listed and listed correctly. So you will get an email this year. You'll also get that rank one notification. That's just an additional way that we have to let you know that there's something out there if you didn't get a chance to see your email already. And then that important information that we send out will also be posted. It'll be posted on our website. It'll be posted uh, in the on the particular page that's relevant to um, that particular activity. All right, here's another question. Is the physical and medical history form needed for band if students uh, in our school are not participating in marching band this year? If they are out there prior to that, yes, that is needed. Okay, so if you're in band, you do need that physical portion as well. Okay, here's another question. I'm gonna kick this one to Brian. Are there links online to documents uh, listing fine arts honors in the prior years? Those should be uh, listed on taps.biz. Click on the word fine arts, scroll down to the bottom and it says honors. If you click on honors, what you're looking for should be there. Uh, if not, after you look at that, please let us know. But previous year's results are there. Previous year's All-State, Academic All-State, those are there. But those actually are the honors. And the results of the contest should also be listed in there as we go back, included in all of them. 18-19, we were able to break out athletics and fine arts. Prior to that, they should all be listed together. If not, drop us an email at info, info at taps.biz, with your specific question, and we'll try to get you the answer you're looking for. Have one more question here about maybe the difference between athletes and fine art students in rank one. There is a separate page for fine arts in rank one this year. Last year it was our first year of rank one, uh, and we had uh, everything all in there together. During the course of this last year, uh, rank one was able to add a whole separate uh, page, fine arts. So you should be able to log in to rank one and go to that fine arts page. It will be up to the people at your school to determine what rights you have to, to view what things, but but some some do have access to the athletics uh, and uh, and fine arts, some just athletics and some just fine arts. So as we go forward this year, there there will be uh, the ability to look at those separately. If, if you're in both those worlds, if you're in fine arts and athletics, you should have both those tabs and you should be able to toggle back and forth between athletic activities and fine art activities. 
Another question, is children's health medical assistance available to one act or just the people who get physicals? Children's health is, is, a, is out there for all of us. They're a partner of, of everyone in TAPS. Um, they also have them on the health page. They have a lot of good guidance. Also, we have some, some numbers and some, and some emails that we can get you connected with them very quickly. Uh, so just let us know how we can help and, and children's health just wants to know how they can help. Okay, Vina. Uh, let's go ahead and move into our closer look. I think we're going to start with a one act play. Is that correct? Yes, let's take a look at one act play. So one act play is one of our uh, is really the only activity that we have a pre qualifying event before the state event. One act play is uh, divided into divisions uh, with uh, four districts per division. There's up to eight schools per district. Some of them are smaller, and we know that some of them fluctuate with each of the new years. Uh, with One Act being one of the first events of the year, uh, it's very important to make sure that we know your intent to participate when we send that out in the summer, as well as you get your participation form sent in on time, um, September 1st. Uh, sometimes we have to reorganize where schools uh, will compete if the numbers don't line up correctly. Uh, the, your district will determine where that district meet is and when that district meet takes place. So it's important to find arts director that you are in communication with your district, um, with your one at play director, as well as them in communication with the district president who will initiate those uh, discussions. Um, district is judged and critiqued at the district level and the top two schools at the district meet will advance to the state meet. Now, historically, the state meet has been at the Callow Theater uh, the last few years. Those state dates are on a calendar, but if you take the two schools from each of the four districts, they make up the eight schools that participate at the state meet. It's judged by three judges and the uh, coaches, directors still get an oral critique um, for their performance there. Uh, one act is really fun. Uh, it's really neat to see the kids in different characters than what I'm used to seeing them at their other events throughout the year. So I, I definitely enjoy that event and being there for those. Uh, moving on to art. Uh, we have art is kind of spread out over the year because they're not just starting and having their dish, their event in the fall, just like one at play, but these kids are starting day one in the art classroom, starting to build their portfolio of what can be entered in the art meet. Uh, we do have um, a fall photo event that John will talk about in just a minute, uh, and a short film event that is part of our spring event. So John, uh, tell us about fall photo. Sure thing. Um, so I'm in I've been uh, helping with fall photo. Uh, last year, we had about um, 1,200 uh, individual entries from over um, 60 TAP schools. Um, we've got uh, all kinds of categories. All this information is on the TAPS website. Uh, I'm going to put a flyer in the uh, in the handout section. That's a it's kind of a poster of. Um, the uh, the photographs that placed uh, for last year's competition. I'm also going to have a link to the um, to the winners gallery so you can see the work of our our students. Um, it's uh, it's an online competition, um, so you submit through a website and we judge them. We we bring in judges. Um, we will probably judge remotely this year, and then um, uh, mail honors um, to your campus uh, and announce those online. We also this new this year we had a. Um, a catalog of the winners in each uh, in each category, and we um, make print versions of those available to the schools, and um, uh, we have uh, digital versions on our website that you can be downloaded. So uh, that's fall photo. We we have a we have fun time uh, seeing the the work that our students uh, can produce. Vina, thanks, John. So short film, like I said, that is a part of our art. Uh, championship in the spring. However, you know, they're, the kids are developing this film throughout the year. So your school can enter up to nine films. So even though your art teacher is in charge of the, your art meet, you as a fine arts director need to make sure your film teacher or other teachers that might be doing um, like journalism or yearbook or something where they might make a documentary, um, they, they would want to 
maybe submit a short film. So look into that. Make sure your digital teachers um, know that um, there is that opportunity and it falls under the art meet. Um, also at the art meet, we have the traditional drawing, um, painting, things like that, mixed media, sculpture, relief. We've got fashion design, jewelry design, applied design, ceramics, um, all those things that are generally visual arts that you think of. But we also do photography, just like the fall photos. We have a spring opportunity for photography. Um, we also do computer rendered art and communication design. I know that some kids are really into the computer generating art and creating digitally, but they might not actually be in the art class learning how to draw. Um, so keep those categories in your mind when you know your students' talents. At the event, we also do an on-site drawing still life and on-site seek and sketch. It's always neat to walk around the art and academics event and see the students in their element just working. It's, it's a pretty cool sight to see. Senior portfolios are open to any seniors and uh, it could be any, they, they don't actually, none of the students actually have to be enrolled in an art class to come to the art meet, although it's helpful when they have a class period to work on their work. Uh, but we do have some seniors that may have taken art for a couple of years and then they're just not able to fit it into their senior year. Uh, but there is not a limit to the number of senior portfolios that your school could submit. And so that's an opportunity for them to just pull some works that they've worked on for the last four years and uh, submit that artwork. Uh, those senior portfolio is uh, submitted ahead of time uh, through um, digital, digital submission for judging. And once that's judged, we um, pull it down to the top 10 students who have the opportunity to bring their in real life artwork of their pieces to the state meet for uh, adjudication as well as a critique with a professor of art. So that's pretty exciting opportunity for those seniors. Some of the seniors over the years have been a, given a critique by a college professor or that notice that, oh, we've got Baylor and UMHB professors here doing these critiques. And I know that some students have walked away with the, the thought that, oh, wow, I'm going to college for art. You know, that that was a really good experience with that professor. So make sure that you kind of get a grasp of what all the art um, entails. Next, we're going to look at our academics meet. Now, if you've ever been to the art and academics meet, it is massive. Um, we've got uh, events for testing in this big room of 300 students. Now, yes, I know that we've got social distancing and physical distancing requirements that we might need to keep in, in mind, but we, we, will, we will do that if necessary. But historically, it's been in a great big room with 300 students just taking these tests, and it is a sight to see. The preparation that goes into academics needs to start early. It's not really fair to the kids when you say, you know what, the art meet, um, the academic meet is next week. Who wants to take a Spanish test? And they they feel overwhelmed. So look at the list of these these tests. You've got math and science, uh, literary criticism, social studies, spelling, uh, current events and issues. These things they. They can be studying ahead of time and preparing throughout the year. Um, some schools have such a vast interest in some of these tests, and so they'll do a practice test at home to pick their top three students to actually take to the event. Uh, so we do take uh, three students for each category. Those rules are in the manual, the bylaws, as far as how many and things like that. So be sure to look at those details. Ready writing and yearbook are a little unique. Uh, ready writing is done ahead of time because it takes so long to do the grading. Um, and then yearbook, yearbook should be easy. You've already got the yearbook. It was a yearbook that was made last year. And so you submit last year's yearbook and you send it to the TAPS office for it to be critiqued and judged. So the academic meet, um, the students take tests and we give uh, ranks for the top six scores. In addition to that, we have the speech events, and this is happening at the same event. Uh, the speech events include original oratory, 
persuasive speaking, prose, poetry, and solo and duet acting. These speaking events, same thing, you bring your three students per category and they compete in a tournament style uh, rounds where they might compete three, four times in order to get down to the top six performers or eight performers. Lincoln Douglas debate also happens at our academic and speech event. We have a great speech committee and academic uh, debate committee. And if you are interested in starting a debate club, uh, let me know and we can connect you with that uh, debate committee. Uh, you only need one person. Uh, but you can bring up to three at, um, at our event. In addition to those events, also in the spring, we have robotics. Now robotics is uh, just, we've only done it for a few years. We have partnered with First in Texas uh, to do the First Tech Challenge. Now the First Tech Challenge is for first, seventh through 12th grade students. So we do allow you to use your seventh and eighth grade students to create your team. Uh, you will compete with the regular season of first and do tournaments and league play with them. Uh, but there is not a qualifying round that gets you to the TAPS event um, like it does for their higher up uh, regional events and world events. So their league play qualifies you for future plays, future opportunities. But for our event, it is just open to TAPS um, FTC teams. Uh, so our actual day of, we do morning matches and then we have afternoon tournaments. Uh, we do do the um, alliance selection and the tournament with your alliance partners in the afternoon. In the morning part of the day, we do judges awards where the kids do an interview. Uh, the last few years, we've done interviews at the pits. This past year, we had planned to do classroom interviews where they go and they talk to the judges in a more private setting instead of the judges coming to the pits. I do hope we can do that this year with the interviews so that the students can have a dedicated time where they speak to the judges and tell about their experience. The one thing I really, not the one thing, but one thing I really love about First Tech Challenge is that it's not just about the robot. Um, it is about the experience and all the things that went into bringing that robot to, um, bringing it to life. You've got their, the strategic thinking that, that has to happen in your uh, building sessions. You've got parts that break, parts that don't work out, ideas that they try and it doesn't work out and they have to try it again and it doesn't work out and they try it again. And sometimes that goes on for weeks before they finally get, oh my goodness, this works, it works. And it's so exciting when they're excited about an idea that they developed in order to get it to where um, their robot does what it's supposed to do. So we do the interviews and notebooks, they keep track of what they're doing and our judges talk to them about that and we give some awards at our event based on their thinking, their design, their innovation. Um, and so first tip challenge is what we use. Uh, the, we do have a sponsor role for First in Texas who graciously brings us volunteers and helps us with our event. So let's see what first has to say. Greetings and welcome to First Tech Challenge. My name is Andrew Schutze and I'm the statewide FTC program manager. For those who are new to FIRST, we welcome you to the only sport where everyone can go pro. For our returning veteran teams, thank you for continuing to invest your time and talents into the next generation of leaders and innovators in Texas. Team registration for the upcoming Ultimate Goal Challenge is now open for the Game Changers season, which is powered by Star Wars Force for Change. We have a game teaser trailer for you shortly. I'd like to take this time to remind our first community that while gameplay may be different due to school and community COVID-19 health and safety guidelines, first is about more than robots. As you know, each team operates much like a small business and the lessons learned, skills gained, and network connections made with workforce mentors go a long way towards their future success. 
with $80 million in scholarship money from over 200 colleges and workforce organizations, it's no wonder FIRST students are some of the most highly sought after collegiate internship and workforce recruits. To learn more, go to firstintexas.org. We look forward to having your school join us for another exciting robotic season. Now with First in Texas, we, are, we do thank them for being a sponsor of our event and helping us with that. Um, the game usually kicks off in September and around the 7th, so be on the lookout for uh, the, the actual game release. We're going to talk about awards and um, how your students and your teams are awarded in the fine arts. So we do give event awards individually and for team accomplishments at each of our events. For example, when at play, we not only do the rankings of the teams, but we give best actress and best actor awards, all-star cast and crew and honorable mention. At cheer, not only are they competing for the championship, but we've got superior performance awards, uh, jump and tumble company. Same with dance, superior performance awards with leaps, kicks, and turns company. In the music events, they're all judged according to their ability. Um, they could choose a hard solo or uh, maybe a freshman level entry solo and still be awarded for the performance of what they, what they did. Um, at the academic and speech event, we give medals and ribbons for the top students as well as we name the overall academic student and overall speech student for each classification. And we just talked about the robotics where we do have the tournament, but we also have those judged awards. So your students are getting uh, recognition at the events that they come to, usually with a medal or a plaque um, or a ribbon. And it's just really exciting when they get to take something home. Our championships, um, we talked a little bit earlier about um, the Henderson Cup, and I'll go into that a little bit more, but the championships are designed either by division or classification, and it's based on the team's effort. So some of our events compile all the individual awards for varying point values, and the champion is determined based on the school with the most points at that event. Uh, for example, in each art category, we give out eight places. And so like first place would get 10 points towards the championship and second place would get eight points and so on. Um, at the end of the day, the school that has the most points from students placing in the art, in each of the art individual entries is the 1A art champion or the 2A art champion. So art and academics and speech and then choir, band and orchestra each have their own classification championship for that event. Now, some of these events, the champion is determined by their team performance against other teams, specifically like cheer. Cheer will compete against other cheer teams for a score which ranks them for that champion. Uh, so cheer and dance and robotics and esports, you will be competing against other teams to become that champion. Same with one act play. Now, drumline and marching band and field band. We do have a uh, we do award champions at those individual events, although in the larger scheme of things, those 
they get points for those awards that goes towards the overall band championship in the spring. We also have what's called the Academic All-State. Now, this is a new award for the fine arts students. We've done it with our athletes for many years. Uh, we did launch it last year, but it was only available to award students for the fall events due to COVID-19. And then we had some stipulated changes for the spring activities. But technically, how it's supposed to work, um, this award is given to juniors and seniors. And the specific criteria is based on how they, uh, what they achieved at their state event. So uh, we do have a list on our website that will have those detailed criteria so you can look up what exactly qualifies them. So for example, music, they would have to be a junior or senior and they would have had to get a superior rating on their solo in order to be considered for academic all state. In addition to that, they have to have a 90 or above GPA for, uh, for, for, the, for the year. So they're, sorry, I think at the, at the grading period. Um, so academic all state is always going to be due the week after the state event. So if you go to the state event, the following week, we'll send out a notification saying, please submit your academic all state students. And basically you, look at their grades and if they are excelling academically as well as in cheer or dance or in uh, art then they become an academic all-state student now throughout the year we keep up with which students are in it. you should keep up with the students that are excelling in their fine arts the of the year awards are fine arts male student of the year female student of the year and Fine Arts Teacher of the Year. Now, good candidates for the Student of the Year would be one that was possibly an all-star cast at district or state, someone who may have performed a class one solo and received a superior rating, or someone who participated in speech events and placed in multiple categories. Past recipients of this award, they may have participated in several fine arts throughout the year, but it's okay if they're super strong in one and the others they just participated in. So your job as your as the fine arts director to find who that one student is for your school so one male and one female you can ask your coaches your fine arts coaches and your fine arts direct um like your band directors choir directors if they want to submit their students to you and then you look over the list or maybe your school admins kind of decide who they want to submit to this award um but it's important that you look over those and not just take the band directors and say, oh yeah, that's a great band kid. And then the next day, the academic teacher says, well, I wanna submit this person. So um, it, you'll wanna make sure that you're including the students across all, across all of them. But then also on the nomination form, be sure to make sure you list the accomplishments. Now, some of these students now, I've seen their names. I make these schedules of, all the different meets and I see them at the event. And so I know these kids are in multiple things. I see them in one act. And then a few months later, I see them uh, at the dance event. And then I see them drawing in art. And then next thing I know, they're on the robotics team. So these kids are doing multiple things. So in the types of nominations, uh, be sure to look for those students that are across the board trying to, they're excelling in all areas of fine arts. Um, it does help the nomination form when they have competed in multiple things. Uh, and so it could be as simple as a solo and that they were also on the cheer team. So things like that, keep those things in mind when you're making your nominations. For teachers, it's a little different from the students. The nomination should be for a teacher that was a head or assistant coach or a director of a TAPS event. Uh, perhaps you want to nominate a teacher that maybe took it, your team to state for the first time or maybe it's a teacher that has taken your team to the state for the last five years. That's really up to you and who you want. We don't have a criteria of what they have to do to be nominated. Um, so it could be a teacher that coaches multiple things or just over overall general programs at your school. But this is a great way to acknowledge your teachers um, and, and your students. So that is due in April. Um, just after all of our fine arts events have happened. And so we'll send out those notifications and it's a simple form. You give us the name, you tell us 
how awesome they are. Uh, and then we have a committee that looks over those nominations and chooses those students. Okay, we talked about the Henderson Cup a little bit earlier. Um, and some of the questions were, what, what is the Henderson Cup and what counts as a Henderson event? Um, so the points that you've gotten from your academic meet determines who the academic champion is. And the points you get from your art meet determines who the art champion is. Uh, so once you are a champion in any of these events, you now get points for that. So the art champion would get 10 points. And if you were like second place in academics, you could get eight points. If your basketball team got third place, then they get six points. Um, and so throughout all the fine arts and sports, you're collecting these points um, in order to go towards this Henderson Cup total. So with um, the question of what's not a Henderson, so robotics and esports, those are new to TAPS. Um, and then drumline and fall band, they, although we have champions at those events, those are not Henderson uh, events. Now drumline and fall band does contribute points to the overall band champion, which the overall band is a Henderson award. So those are the ones listed there that are Henderson worthy. And uh, you do get to collect those points throughout all the championships for the year. And then the top score for each champion wins this Henderson Cup. It actually is a trophy with a big cup, a bowl. And you take that award and it gets to be displayed at your school campus for the whole next school year. And it's just a really cool thing to have. Um, so when you're prepping your students, keep in mind, we do want to award them for their efforts through the events and then the championship event the academic all state for those students that excel academically as well as do their co-curricular and extracurricular activities. And then the of the year in Henderson are at the end of the year. We do have a commercial break for our sponsor, Team IP, Steve. All right, we're gonna jump past that, Vina, and we're gonna go right ahead to grab a couple of questions right quick. Uh, we've had a couple of questions about Tapster. Is Tapster completely gone? Are we supposed to enter our instructors and directors into rank one or into Tapster or both? Tapster will only be used by us here uh, on, the, uh, on the staff end for our meet management. All of your students and all of your instructors are to be in rank one and rank one only. All your entries will go through rank one this year. Uh, we will still have Tapster. We'll be using that in some events, not all on our end. Uh, another question here about um, our plans for the fall, which is what we'll jump into here in just a second. Uh, volleyball and, and football, all of our fall sports and those activities have been, uh, their schedules have been kind of changed and moved and postponed from the beginning of August, uh, moving toward the first part of September. Uh, why is that not true for one act play? Well, that's a great question. Obviously, they're physically close to each other while they're uh, doing their performance, but uh, one act play is a fine art. As such, it doesn't come under our athletic regulations for practices and contact hour limitations. Those are all decisions you make at your local school level. So what you choose to do with those kind of activities, band, one act play, all those fine art activities, fine art activities that are coming up, that's a local school decision that you make with regard to how you manage that and what protocols you have in place. Um, let's see. All right, that's pretty good on questions. Uh, a look ahead, we'll jump there. 2020, 2021, a look ahead. As you all know, the spring ended uh, uh, in a tough fashion for all of us. We didn't get to have uh, those fine art competitions and some of our athletic competitions we wanted to have in the spring. As we move into the fall, last week in our webinar on Friday, we shared our thoughts for how we're gonna move into the fall with regard to our athletics. Um, fine arts is up to you guys at the local school level to manage that with regard to your protocols and your desires at the local level. So our current plans are out there. They're posted on the website. Uh, we do know there are some contingencies. Obviously, this is changing daily. We are keeping an eye on this. We are aware that things happen today and they'll continue to happen. Uh, our staff and our executive board will continue to monitor that. And we'll have updates coming your way August 3rd, August 17th, and August 31st. 
as we move into the start of school at your respective schools and then move into the Labor Day season and beyond that and get things going full steam. We'll be giving you updates if any changes occur, if there's anything, it'll always be posted on the website and available for you there and we'll send out emails and alerts as well. Brian, do you wanna have some closing comments for us? Just a, a reminder of the TAPS mission and vision statement that the, uh, the, the mission of TAPS is to provide wholesome competition for the advancement of fellowship, fair play, and sportsmanship. And we believe that can be accomplished in any and all opportunities uh, that we present, whether it be a Henderson Cup, non-Henderson Cup event. Truly look forward to seeing the, the young men and women of TAPS compete. In our vision in this day and time, we envision ourselves as an organization whose distinct member worldviews uh, among its diverse member schools and students promises uh, and promotes competition for our schools and understanding fellowship and excellence. So in a very turbulent time, uh, we're proud to be a part of the solution and, and hopefully not part of the problem. On a communication side, please make sure you get your sponsors into rank one. Uh, make sure all of your program directors are there. It's our one and only way of communicating with you this coming year. Again, we thank you for taking the time out of your day today. John, I'm going to throw it to you for the end, and we appreciate you joining us for Session B. Info, I-N-F-O at taps.biz. For any questions or concerns, we'll get them answered as quickly as we can. Thank you again for being a part of TAPS and the TAPS extended family. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Vina. And thank you, everybody in the TAPS office. And thank you all, folks, for being with us here today. Uh, your Session B certificate is in the Handouts section right now. If you click on that tab that says Handouts, and click on the one that says Fine Arts B 2020. That'll open in your browser. You can download from there. Uh, we've also got that fall photo cover that's in there. Um, the Fine Arts Media Selections, which are some links to other things, other performances, other uh, podcast episodes, all kinds of stuff that's about our, fi our, our Fine Arts program. So if you're new, you can see what some of these things look like there. Um, and uh, we've got a list of our social media accounts for you uh, if you need. and with that, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes, and you folks have a good day.